Imagine all the delicious flavors of a really good French onion soup. Then add some pasta and a little bit of beef, turn it into a casserole. Oh my goodness, you're gonna love this one. Welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is super easy, but let me just say, it's not super quick. And that's because we need to develop flavors in our French onion pasta. Let me tell you, it is worth every minute that you spend. And it's easy and it's mostly hands off. All right, so French onion pasta. You might have seen it on TikTok many moons ago. It went viral, it was a big thing. This is not that. This is Louise's version of French onion pasta. I didn't even know that French onion pasta was a thing until I started doing research just to make sure that I was calling it the right name for search reasons. I had made this up on my own and then tweaked it to absolute perfection. Trust me on this one. Make it the way I'm making it. You're gonna love it. It's super easy. Okay. I'm going to use the Ninja Foodie pressure cooker and air crisper for this recipe. You can do this recipe several different ways, and I will get into all of that in the written post. So real quick, you can do it completely from start to finish in the Ninja Foodie. That's how I'm going to do it today. Or you can do it in your Instant Pot. If you don't have a crisping lid, transfer it to a casserole dish and then finish it in the oven. Either way, it's, oh my gosh, so delicious. The first thing we need to do is get our onion sauteed. This is the longest part of the whole recipe, okay? It takes about 25 minutes. We're going to do it just on sear saute on high. You can air crisp, okay? I have done that in other recipes. You can do that, but it's not exactly the same. And because we are pairing this with pasta, we want to caramelize these onions like you would for French onion soup. And that takes time, guys, okay? All right. Go ahead, turn on your Ninja Foodie go, or your Instant Pot, go to high, sear saute and hit start. Now, another thing I like to do with this recipe is use ghee, okay? This is my homemade ghee. I make it right in my slow cooker. It is absolutely amazing. You can check out that recipe. I will link to it below. This is amazing, okay? and it adds such a nice flavor. However, if you don't have ghee, don't like ghee, use just plain butter, unsalted for this recipe, okay? Um, if you need to use salted things, just cut back on the salt by about a quarter of a teaspoon. And we're gonna use four nice tablespoons full. Now, the reason I like to use ghee is because it will, first of all, it gives a great flavor, like I said, but also it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna burn as easily on this higher heat. So it really works well. You could use a combination of butter and oil, olive oil if you wanted, or just all oil. And it could be olive oil or avocado oil, whatever you want. Four tablespoons of the ghee, two to three tablespoons of regular oil, because you, you know, we're benefiting from the flavor here and regular oil isn't gonna give a ton of flavor. All right, let that heat up a little bit, then we will get our onions in. You want three pounds of onions, and the way that you wanna prepare them for this recipe is a little bit important. You wanna cut the onion in half from stem to root, peel off the paper and maybe the first layer if need be, and then you're gonna slice your half of an onion into about half inch slices. So half inch slices is what you want. They're gonna hold up better when we go to pressure cook. Even though we do remove some of them before we pressure cook, they're gonna hold up a little bit better. So half of an inch. If you slice them a little thinner, is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. All right, three pounds of onions, which is about four to five onions. And I use sweet onions for this recipe, but you could use white onions, yellow onions, you could even use red onions, but they are gonna look different in your dish, okay? Then for the seasonings, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, one teaspoon of dried thyme leaves. And just sprinkle those all over the onions. And then toss the onions and the seasonings around to coat them in the butter. And I know you're probably thinking, that is a lot of onions, Louise. Wait till you see how much they reduce down in the next 25 minutes, okay? Wow. 
Once your onions are tossed around and the seasonings are dispersed throughout, then leave the Ninja Foodi or your Instant Pot on high sear saute and leave it alone for about 10 to 12 minutes. Don't do anything. Let them cook. Then we'll toss them around. We'll let them cook longer and repeat that process until they are golden brown, really well caramelized, and then we will get on to the next step. So they've been sauteing for about 10 minutes or so, at least up to full temperature because it took about five minutes to really get them going. Now we want to toss them around again. You will see the bottom starting to brown. That is what we want. And they're already reducing quite a bit, but they're gonna go even further. So toss them around, try to get the brown ones on top and, and the ones that are less cooked on the bottom. And now you're gonna toss them around about every five to seven minutes until they are really golden brown, caramelized and reduced down quite a bit, okay? You're gonna end up with about a cup and a half to two cups of onions when we're all done, okay? Oh my goodness, there we have it. This is what you wanna see. A nice golden brown color. Oh my gosh, so amazing. Now it looks like I have a little bit more than two cups of onions in there. No worries how much you end up with uh, because you know they might reduce down a little bit more, they might reduce down a little bit less. That depends on how you cut them. Take out about half of the onions. So I'm gonna give a good scoop. And we'll see, that's about half. And that is about maybe just a little over a cup. So I probably do have a, just about two and a quarter cup, maybe. All right, that looks great. Now we want to add in some beef. That is totally optional, though, because honestly, you could add in um, like mushrooms instead if you wanted to. No, no problems there. I like the addition of beef. I just think this completes it. You can serve this casserole with a nice side salad and you have everything you need for a complete dinner. The type of beef that I'm using, and yes, I'm using the same tongs because it's all gonna be cooked, it's gonna be fine, um, is labeled in our grocery store, carne piccata. And I used it recently for tacos that I made and it's perfect. It's just thinly sliced beef. So you could use thinly sliced top round, thinly sliced bottom round, thinly sliced skirt steak, thinly sliced sirloin, whatever you want. Filet mignon if you want. I mean, ooh, talk about delicious. Probably a little too expensive for this dish though. Then you wanna add in a half of a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt just to season the beef. You can do this ahead of time or right before you put it in. It's not gonna make that much difference in this recipe. So just toss the beef around to get the seasoning kind of mixed in a little bit. Then we're gonna add it to the remaining onions and brown that up a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna add in is one bulb of roasted garlic. Now you know I love my garlic and I love it roasted and it adds an amazing flavor to this. This is one full bulb of roasted garlic, so about 10, 11 cloves. If you wanted to use whole garlic raw, you absolutely can. Just peel the paper off, give them a little smash and throw them in. And you could use the whole bulb. It'll, they'll mellow out as they pressure cook. If you want to use minced garlic, use about a half to a full tablespoon. That's going to give a little bit stronger of a garlic flavor to your dish. I like the little nuance of the roasted garlic, the sweetness, and oh my gosh, it pairs so beautifully with all the other ingredients. So take the time, roast the garlic, you won't regret it. All right, that looks good. Once you no longer see any pink with the meat, you're good to go. It does not have to get brown like you would if you had a skillet, a dry skillet, and you're browning up uh, beef. It's not going to get that way because there's some liquid in there from the onions, and we want to keep all that flavor in the pot. So we're not going to remove it just to brown the beef. It is not worth it for this recipe. 
Now we deglaze. This is important because depending on how your onions cooked, you might have a, a bit of stuck on fond, okay, from the onions. That is flavor and we want that in the pot with the rest of the ingredients. So we deglaze. You deglaze with liquid while the pot is hot. What I'm gonna deglaze with is sherry, okay? Totally optional, but delicious. And guess what? If you're not a drinker, um, you can absolutely skip it. You can just use the beef consomme um, to deglaze the pot. That's no problem. If you aren't a drinker but don't mind cooking with alcohol, you can use cooking sherry from the grocery store. That's what this is, okay? Because I wasn't gonna buy a big bottle of sherry. Is it the best quality? Nah. Does it give a good flavor? Certainly. All right. Now, it is like formed almost kind of like a thick sauce, believe it or not. And there's that's just from all of the juices from the onions and the butter and everything. And it just sort of thickens up a little bit. It's quite nice. This would be delicious right now, spread on a toasted bun. Oh my gosh, I think it would be amazing. But we are making French onion pasta. So now we need to get into the liquids. Okay, this is gonna be weird for me because you know I don't use a lot of canned food. I don't use a lot of over-processed food and canned food can be very salty. But this recipe, I think it needs it because I made it with all beef broth and I wasn't really happy with it. So what I changed the recipe to is two cans of beef consomme. Campbell's is the only brand I found in the grocery store, but um, there's probably others, but this is the only one I could find. Each can is 10 and a half ounces, okay? So you're gonna want 21 ounces of the beef consomme. And if you can find it, get a can of this French onion soup. It does make a difference. Even though we've got all the ingredients for the French onion soup kind of from scratch, this added this boost of flavor that I thought was missing when I didn't have it. However, if you can't find it and you can't find the beef consomme, you can use all beef broth, okay? Might, you might need to salt a little bit more, but I'll get into that in just a minute. Now, look at the difference. This is beef broth. This is consomme. You can see the difference in the color. When I went to the store to get the ingredients for this recipe to do the video, guess what? They only had one can of the beef consomme. So today we're gonna use half beef broth and half consomme. Okay, so 10 and a half ounces of the beef consomme, 10 and a half ounces of beef broth, 10 and a half ounces of French onion soup. So you need a total of 31 and a half ounces of liquid. This is a precise amount Oh, you could do 32, which is four cups. So you could do that too. That's not gonna make a difference, but don't go to five cups and certainly don't go down to three cups or you're not gonna have enough liquid to cook your pasta. All right, now we're gonna add in our liquid here. And let me show you what this looks like. Cause it really is, it's probably like beef consomme with onions. I'm sure they add some terrible ingredient to it. It looks like a beef broth with onions in it, which is just kind of like what we made. But there's something in here that makes it delicious. I think it might be a little bit of starch, which helps bind with the pasta starch and create a nice thick sauce, but it's thin enough to go under pressure with. There's something in here that made it better. So that's what we're gonna add in. It's optional though, guys. It really tasted good without it, but I thought it just gave it a little bit more flavor. All right, now we put in our pasta. So what you choose to use for your pasta is up to you. Now, I don't recommend fettuccine. I don't recommend long, thin pasta like spaghetti or angel hair. It's going to cook too fast. It's not gonna be the right pasta for this dish. You want something a little heartier. Could you use elbows? Yeah, probably. But I really urge you to get something nice and hearty like the rigatoni, okay? This turned out amazing. I tried several different pastas when I was testing the recipe. This one was my favorite. You want one pound of pasta, which was about, it is about six cups, I think. Let's look, in case you get your pasta in bulk. Yeah, it's about six cups. We're gonna add this in. Now your cooking time will change depending on your pasta. But if you get a nice, thick, hearty pasta like this, penne, things like that, it's going to be fine, okay? Penne is another good choice. 
they're gonna cook at the same time. But if you go down to something like elbows or even little bow tie, you might need to take the time down a little bit. All right, so now let's talk about pasta. You wanna get it as much underneath the liquid as you can. It does not have to be totally under the liquid. Don't add more liquid, okay? Or you're gonna end up with too soupy of a dish. But just try to press it down into the liquid here. So once it's all pressed down, now you're gonna determine your cook times. And I have my cook time. You might have a different cook time, okay? Because it depends on how you like your pasta. If you want a truly al dente pasta, that means a bit of a chew to it, you're gonna go four minutes of high pressure cooking with an immediate release. I personally like my pasta that way. That's how I make this for me at home. But I'm gonna do it like I think most people would like it, which is gonna be four minutes of high pressure with a two minute natural release time. So set your pot up for pressure cooking. This is the OL series, so it's the smart lid. It's a little bit different from an instant pot or an older two lid model of Ninja Foodi. Make sure your valve is to the sealed position. Select pressure, and I have to actually start stop this again to select pressure cook once we move the slider. High pressure is what you want. Four minutes for this type of pasta if you want it al dente or just a little over. If you like softer pasta, by all means, go up to five minutes or six minutes and do an immediate release. It's perfectly fine. Now, hit start. It's going to come up to pressure fairly quickly for the amount of volume in this pot because the contents are hot already, but it's still gonna take probably about eight minutes to come to pressure. Pressure cook for four minutes, al dente, really al dente, do an immediate release. Al dente, step down a little bit, do a two minute natural release. Really soft or softer, five to six minute pressure cook with an immediate release. All right, we are all done. Now the noodles on the very top are gonna to be a little bit less done. So do yourself a favor and toss them around. And you will have some liquid, but you can see most of it is gone. And any that is left will um, create a nice sauce for your pasta. So this is not a dry dish at all. It is, oh my gosh, so good. Now, remember those onions that we took out? The reason I did that, and it's totally optional, you don't have to, is because if I look through here now, I barely see any onions. They are so cooked down from the pressure cooking time that they're pretty much, you can't see them. I wanna see the onions and taste the onions, so I leave half of them out so that I can add them in right now and they keep their texture. all around oh my gosh this could be one of the best things ever next time I'm gonna add mushrooms because I think that would be great but we're keeping it just like French onion soup with beef I added beef all right now what you want to do is take a little bit of the broth a noodle and some of the beef to give it a taste for seasonings, because once we put the toppings on, we're not gonna be able to adjust the seasoning. So it's important that you do that. You might need a little bit more salt, you might need a little bit of pepper, you might want more thyme, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh my. You might want the pasta to sit a little bit longer. If it's not done enough, just close the lid and let it sit in there, and it'll soften up some more. Oh. Absolutely perfect. I would still say that pasta is al dente. So if you want it a little softer, definitely go up on your pressure cook time or longer on your natural release. Either one will be fine. Now, we cannot have French onion pasta without cheese and without some sort of bread topping, right? This is where the magic happens. So this is really good. Once we add this, it becomes over the top delicious. Now, I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about this because I think it's important. 
for people to be able to make this dish the way that they want to. If you are gonna serve it for a crowd and you wanna put it in a casserole dish, now's the time to do that. You can put it in a nine by 13 pan and it will give you about a depth of maybe three inches or so. Then put your toppings on and bake it in the oven at about 400 degrees until the cheese gets bubbly. If you want to serve it for a crowd right out of the Ninja or your Instant Pot, your Duo Crisp, whatever has a crisping lid, you can do that. You can put the toppings right on right now like I'm gonna do. That's how I'm gonna show you today in the video. However, if you think you're gonna have a lot of leftovers or you wanna do this for meal prep, you wanna portion it out, take out what you want to make later and only top what you think you're gonna eat. Because I will say, I have reheated it with the topping on and it's good, but it's not as good as freshly made. So what I recommend if you wanna do this for meal prep is to put it into individual servings and then steam crisp, or you can simply warm it up and then bake it in the oven with the toppings fresh right before you serve it. Okay, what are the toppings? What are the cheeses? Really, it's up to you. What I'm using is about five ounces, four to six ounces. I mean, cheese, it doesn't matter. Add more, add less, whatever you want, of Swiss just because it, it's what I could find at the grocery store and I didn't feel like making a special trip to get Gruyere. Gruyere would be my first choice. Shred it up or buy it shredded if you can. Swiss is harder to find shredded. This one is about a cup and a quarter or so. It doesn't matter, again, half, one and a half cups, two cups, whatever you want. You're gonna put that on. Also, provolone. And provolone, you can find it where you could grate it, that's fine. I just found it in slices and that's what I'm gonna use. And then croutons, whether you make your own like I do, these are the air fryer croutons and oh my gosh, they are so amazingly delicious. The only thing I did different from my recipe on my website is I added one teaspoon of thyme, okay? Because I wanted to marry all the flavors together. Now, you can also top it a couple different ways. You can put the cheese, the shredded um, Swiss on, then the croutons, and then lay over the provolone. That's what I did when I did it in a casserole dish and took the picture um, for the recipe and for the video. But the provolone really kind of melted down a little bit more than I wanted to and exposed more of the croutons, which made for a really pretty picture. But as far as eating goes, I want that nice thicker layer of cheese on top. So we're going to do a little bit different today and see how it works out. All right. Give everything a nice stir around just one more time before we top this. And then you're gonna sprinkle the croutons over the top. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to eat this. This is about three cups of croutons. I might not use them all. Just gonna just toss them around in there. Now you could use bread, but honestly, it's not gonna be as good. There's a little bit, oh, I am gonna use all three cups. Yes, I am, yes, I am. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. And you could use bread, you know, like bread cubes, but they're not gonna get crispy because we're not baking that long. So definitely start out with croutons. And I really recommend buying a baguette, a French baguette, cutting them up and making your own air fryer croutons. They are amazingly delicious. Now we want to sprinkle on the cheese, whatever kind you're using. And if you see any of the pasta, Try to cover it. Now see, personally, I could use a little more cheese. I'm gonna go get a little bit more because I want it all to be covered. And then we'll put the slices on. The amount of cheese you're gonna use will depend on the surface area of the pan or pot that you're making this in. Because you could also do this in a Dutch oven. You know, you could put your Dutch oven, put cheese on top and put it in the oven um, uncovered. So that would work. You could start it on the stove and and put it in the oven. So there's tons of ways to make this. Now, I'm going a little overboard with the cheese, but I love cheese. And what I was saying before, and I don't know if I finished the thought, is if you see any pasta, make sure it is completely covered or it gets kind of hard and crunchy and I don't really like that. All right, so we probably used about seven ounces of cheese here. This will serve eight, to 12 people, just depending on your appetite. Now we put the provolone on. 
and this is eight ounces of provolone in slices. Again, I don't know if I'm gonna use it all because I just wanna cover the top. That looks good. Okay, now, the magic of the Ninja Foodi, one pot, we can do it all. What you wanna do is keep your slider over if you're using this model, or put your crisping lid down and select air fry, bake, roast, or even broil. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and go to bake roast because that's what I use for the oven instruction. So we're just gonna keep it similar to that, but it doesn't matter guys. You could use broil and that's a little hotter temperature. Uh, broil is grill in the UK. It'll get done a little bit faster. You could use air crisp. I don't think that provolone is gonna fly around on you. So whatever you wanna use is fine. 375, I'm gonna set it for 20 minutes. It's not gonna take that long, at least I don't think. I have not done it this way in the Ninja Foodi because when I tested the recipe, first of all, when I first started testing the recipe, I didn't use the croutons and they were missing. They were really missing. And then when I did test the recipe with the croutons, I did it in the oven so I could give you those instructions. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. There's also a way to make this in the Ninja Speedy, but you would need more liquid because you've got to make sure that, uh, because we can't pressure cook in the Ninja Speedy, you would need more liquid because you're going to do a steam and crisp instead, okay? And I would cut the volume down by half because you don't have as much room in the Ninja Speedy as you do in the Ninja Foodi. All right, it's been about six minutes or so. Oh my goodness, I'm glad I checked it. Wow, look at that. It's gorgeous. It's gonna be so amazing. All right, now you probably wanna let it cool a little bit before you dig in, but not too much, because you don't want that cheese to cool off. But I'm not going to wait. I'm gonna go ahead and Get a nice chunk. Now what you wanna do is take your nonstick spoon or spatula, go all the way down to the bottom so that you get enough pasta with the topping. Oh my, oh my goodness. Oh, if that isn't cheesy goodness, I don't know what it is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look, look. So, so good. I can't even, can't even get the cheese to pull apart. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I will need to let it cool down to taste it because it's going to be piping hot. You see, we don't have a ton of liquid, but we've got a nice sauce. Oh my gosh. So don't worry about your pasta being dry. It is not dry. Okay. I can't wait. All right, there's the pasta. Add a little bit of the onion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. And the pasta really did soften up. So it is al dente minus two, okay? <laughs> On a scale. I would say really soft pasta would be al dente minus five, but it is not al dente right now. So again, if you want it al dente at serving, don't do that natural release. Four minutes of pressure cook, immediate release. The steak or beef, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Perfect. All right. Now, of course, we're going to have to get the mega bite, which means a little bit of everything in one bite. So a crouton, the cheese, a piece of steak. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Mmm. This just might be the absolute best dish I've ever made. And I happen to like my cooking, so that's saying a whole lot. 